Put this in perspective for us. How much of an achievement is this? Well, on the one hand, it's a great achievement, uh, especially for the families of uh, those who will be released. Uh, certainly, there will be disappointment on the part of uh, those families whose uh, children or spouses or relatives are being held. But as a start, uh, it certainly is important. On the other hand, uh, this is a very complicated arrangement. Uh, in a kind of quote unquote normal hostage uh, exchange, you have one country trading a prisoner for another prisoner held by somebody else. Here you have an active war. You have concerns about humanitarian uh, situation on the ground. You also don't have uh, one uh, group holding hostages. We know that Hamas mm -hmm. is holding some hostages, but they've said that they're not holding all of them, which means that this gets even more complicated uh, once we get past this first step. And I think the delay until Friday tells you that there are still details to be worked out. Well, of course, there are details to be worked out, and we still will have yet to see what happens after this brief pause and the exchange of the hostages and prisoners. Netanyahu earlier today, when speaking, said they will continue eliminating Hamas until they have absolute victory. And I just wonder if you feel that this agreement brings us closer to the end of this conflict or potentially pushes that eventual end further away, given that a four-day pause theoretically could give Hamas an opportunity to regroup. Well, I think it's too early to tell whether it's going to help or hurt bringing the war to an end. Uh, Israel is determined to decapitate and to uh, destroy Hamas's ability to attack Israel or to govern Gaza. Uh, they've obviously accomplished some of their purposes uh, in the north of Gaza, but the Israelis are talking quite openly about the need to move south, particularly in the Khan Yunus area. And that will create an additional set of burdens on the humanitarian community with uh, about a million and a half people having moved from the north to the south, if the fighting now moves to the south, what do you do with those people? Do they have to pick up and leave again? So I, I don't know if we're any closer to a resolution or an end of this uh, fighting. Uh, but in the meantime, I think we certainly can applaud the fact that there will be more humanitarian goods coming in and that at least some families will be reunited with their loved ones. Of course, Ambassador, there have been a lot of questions about the way this war has been prosecuted uh, by the Israelis. And I talked about that today with a Democratic congressman from California, Ami Berra, who serves on the House Foreign Affairs and Intelligence Committees. He joined us on Bloomberg Radio to talk about what comes next in this conflict. Here he is. They're going to continue to degrade Hamas. They're going to continue to do what they have to do mm -hmm. in order to secure the Israeli people. But is there a different way to prosecute this war? Can you do something a little bit more surgical, more tactical, um, minimize the, the, the massive innocent civilian lives lost, the destruction? I mean, at the end of the day, um, the Palestinian people have to live somewhere. And, you know, I don't think it's a, a great idea for Israel to try to occupy Gaza. I'm not sure what that looks like. So can we take this pause? Can we think about what might a two-state solution look like? Ambassador, how would you answer the congressman? Well, you know, I served in Israel during the second Palestinian uprising, the Intifada, uh, which saw violence and terrorism and counterviolence and Israeli military activities almost every day for four years. And the one thing I learned is I don't second guess uh, military leaders. Uh, once they get their instructions from the political echelon, uh, they've got to carry out their, their mission. Uh, we know from past experience with Israel that they are careful about trying to avoid civilian casualties. They try to abide by the laws of armed combat. They abide by the Geneva and Hague conventions. Uh, but casualties occur in war, and that's an unfortunate reality which uh, we all mourn over those who have lost. But uh, I don't think it suggests an, an answer to the problem. What does a state like Israel do when a uh, rather horrific act of terrorism is perpetrated against not its military, but against innocent civilians within Israel in the communities surrounding Gaza? So there's no excusing uh, anything that's going on here. Israel is trying to avoid the civilian casualties. 
But I would avoid second guessing that in believing that there's some better way to uh, try to uh, rid Israel of the threat of Hamas terrorism.